Welcome to the TikTok Podcast. The clock is always ticking, so let's synchronize our watches and dive in. I'm your host, Callie Brigham, and I'm here to help you make time for what matters. Welcome back, friends. This is the TikTok Podcast. I am Callie. Did you do your homework from our last Tuesday episode? That was our episode on triggers, negative triggers. That was the bad news episode. If you have not listened to that one, go ahead and pause this one. Circle back. That is episode 54. Grab your notes section out so you can get those negative triggers written out, focused on, so that we can move on to today's good news. Here we go. Triggers part two. Okay. So. Again, did you make your list? How long was your list? Did you add to it at all during the week? Did you start to realize that, oh, that's a negative trigger? Ooh, that's a negative trigger. Okay, write that down, and I'm sure you are ready for today's part two. So now you're like, what in the world do I do with this list? Do I burn it? Do I delete it? What do I, do I shred it? What do I do? Well, if you remember, the most important thing, the most mission critical important thing about negative triggers is that they are outside of your control. And because of that, the most important thing about today's topic, the good news of positive triggers is that these are going to be within your control. Okay. So got it? Negative triggers outside of my control. Positive triggers within my control. That, if you hear nothing else, I want you to remember that because this is also the way that most people get tripped up. And you may have never even heard of this concept before, but you've still processed this concept before, even though you haven't heard about it. Because negative triggers are not within your control, most people look for positive triggers that are also not in their control. That is where we get all kinds of messed up. That's where the problem lies. That's why many times we can't move past these negative triggers and the small little ones feel insurmountable and they feel giant. Okay, but this is the good news. This is the good part. So let me kind of break down what I mean based on what we talked about last time. So last time we talked about ugly weather. Remember, you got to say it Southern, ugly weather or nasty weather. The counterpoint to that. So let's say you say, all right, my negative trigger is when the weather is bad, which ironically, can't make this up. I mean, I maybe paused 10 minutes between recording part one and part two, and it was raining during part one. Like I could even hear thunder outside. The clouds were dark. I am recording part two right now, and I'm pretty sure the sun is out. So like this is really unfair because the counterpoint to the negative trigger of bad weather is not good weather. Although I love it. I love that the weather is turning great. That's awesome. That is not the equal and opposite positive trigger because why? It's not in my control. I could not turn it on and turn it off. All right. We talked about a bad hair day. The counterpoint to that So the positive trigger in which you get to navigate this is not a good hair day because that is not always in your control unless it's actually hair hair day, thanks to my Trina. That's always a good day, but that is not within my control other than booking it. Okay. In sales, we talked about the negative trigger was a no or a rejection. The positive trigger is not making a sale getting an appointment booked, someone giving you a referral. All of those things are awesome and they are great and they can be the result of work. However, they cannot be labeled a positive trigger. Why? Because they aren't in your control. Does that make sense? Okay. So if that is the case and you're with me still, you're like, okay, wait, I need a second to process this. Negative triggers are outside of my control. Positive triggers have to be within my control. So we need a whole paradigm shift. So the positive trigger work that we're going to do is making a list of the things you can control that get you back to center or get the pet 
back in your step or at least reframe you and refocus you so that you can keep your day going so you don't lose a day or a week or a month because those darn negative triggers have messed you up. Okay, we're also going to probably need at least double the amount of positive triggers, like double. So if your list of negative triggers is long, get ready. We got to we got to get to business here because and I'll tell you why in a minute. So let me rework the whole weather situation, right? Bad weather, nasty weather, ugly weather, negative trigger. Positive trigger. Lighting a candle. Having a favorite something to sip on. A comfy blanket. Certain music. Uh, maybe an outfit. Maybe a bright lipstick. Maybe it's a pop of red or a glossy pink. Maybe it's some false lashes. I mean, who knows? Those are the positive triggers that counteract counterbalance, go on the attack if it's weather. All right, if it's hair, maybe it's a great hat. Y'all, I love me some hats. I could wear a hat every single day of my life. Why? Because then I don't really have to worry about my hair. I mean, I'm telling you, I just realized in saying it out loud, a hat is a positive trigger for me. Maybe yours is a scrunchie or a headband or a new haircut that is more manageable or flattering. Not just hair day, but like, okay, now this works with my timeline a little bit more. This works with my hair pattern a little bit more. This like it just makes sense with my haircut. Maybe you have naturally curly hair and you always straighten it and then it doesn't straighten right and then that, that gets a negative trigger, right? Well, a positive trigger could actually be learning how to love your curls, okay? Sales. Again, a bad sales day, something negative that happened, the counterpoint to that is listening to a motivational podcast or a story or reading a book or chatting with a friend or a mentor that you know that you can reach up to. Like they're not going to also dump their garbage on your white carpet and be like, oh yeah, they're not going to one-up you. They're not going to say, oh, me too. They're going to say, man, yeah, that has to be frustrating. Why don't we talk through it? Like, let's talk about the good that's happening. Or let That is the kind of positive trigger that I'm talking about. It is within your control that you can step into so that you can make the flip, make the change. Also, these positive triggers can be plan P, P for positive. If you heard me on my episodes before, I've been talking about in my morning routines and all of that. You can have plan A, but you should also have plan P because plan P stands for pivot. And one, so one of my, well, two really of my positive triggers, I'd like to think, and they many times can be, are being outside and exercise. A lot of times that's within my control. I can go sit on my porch. I can go walk my walk that I love. I mean, when I'm outside, I feel amazing. I also enjoy exercise because of the endorphins. You know what Elle Woods says, right? (laughs) Endorphins make you happy. Happy people don't murder their husbands. Okay. Preferably, I actually like both of these. I can, I like to double up my positive triggers. I like to be outside and I like to exercise. And as a matter of fact, I think I like to triple up my positive triggers because I like to be outside. I like to exercise and I like to listen to something at the same time. But what if it's raining? Uh Uh-oh. What if it's raining? And I mean, I'm not talking about like a light little rain. What if it's really raining? Well, I have to have a plan P for that one. I've got to have other ones. So I know I could go into my neighbor's garage, which we call the pit, and I could get a workout in there. At least I've got two of the three. I can work out. I can even leave the door open. And the rain's coming down. It sounds pretty, but it's not, you know, getting in my way. Or maybe a dance party, right? Maybe I just have a dance party at the house. Speaking of which, I hope you have playlists. You should have playlists of different kinds of music based on what you're going to need. Maybe you've got like the Stephen Furtick motivational, I can handle it, confidence or whatever. My son um, had the state championship, which by the way, they won. Oh my goodness. They were the underdogs. You guys, they played a team from Miami. They're the, they were the North Florida um, kind of regional winners. And they played a team from Miami that was undefeated all year. They'd only conceded six goals in an entire year. This team was from Miami and our little team from the Gulf Coast of Florida played and we won two nothing, but we're on our way to the field. And I mean, we are, we have the windows down. 
we are rocking out to some Stephen Furtick motivational, I mean, like power plays here. We get to the field and we're like, yeah. Okay, so I hope you have your different playlists. Maybe you need save videos. I promise you that baby animals and laughing babies will always do it. Like if you need a positive trigger, baby animals and laughing babies, even laughing people in general will always do it. So what I want you to do is I want you to imagine a battle and a battlefield. Does life feel like a battle? And like a battlefield? I bet it does. Negative triggers are the arrows that are targeting you. They're coming at you. Sometimes one at a time, sometimes multiples, sometimes all day, all night. The positive triggers are your weapons. Now, at first, they're probably going to be your defensive weapon. Like, ooh, yikes. Here it was. Here it came. My goal for you is that eventually they become your offensive weapons too, which means you start to use them before that arrow is even shot at you because you know that might be coming. And remember, you might need to double up because as practiced as you can be, sometimes you need that backup one. So that's why I want you to think of like this armor and all your weapons. The best part is, as I mentioned, a lot of times you'll see them coming before they get close enough to even really hurt you like they used to or take you down like they used to. My friend Molly, who's a therapist, um, licensed marriage and, and family therapist, in her episode back at episode nine, before we were in double digits, she talked about how to handle challenging friends and family. I also just want to say at the time we recorded it and when we were done, she leaned in and said, I have to tell you something. She's like, I haven't told anybody yet. I mean, she told her sister, she told, but she, um, she was like, I'm pregnant. And if you know Molly's story, oh my goodness, it's such an um, incredible story. Um, so many years of infertility, failed IVF and all these things. And they ended up having their little boy and she is really, really soon going to be having her baby girl. Okay. That's an aside. I just wanted you to know. So can you imagine though, let's, let's go back to that battlefield. Can you imagine being poised and ready instead of reactive and victimized by others and by the same darn situations over and over and over. This is now your new superpower. These positive triggers are your superpower. Like think Wonder Woman and her weapons. I Googled her weapons. Okay. The last, we all know that a couple of them, the lasso of truth, that magical rope that makes people have to tell the truth. Sometimes it'll be sometimes we'd like that, sometimes we wouldn't, right? What about the bracelets of submission? <laughs> the gauntlets of Atlas, that's a set of gloves that grant her super strength. Ooh, an invisible jet. She can go wherever. The metal mace. Hmm. The star sapphire ring. She can manipulate love energy. Okay, well. Um, the Athena's eyes that helps enhance her vision and her perception. Um, let's see the black lantern ring. I mean, she's got all these things, right? All these weapons. And now you have yours. You are not a victim to your circumstances in that battle. You are armed. You are ready. You can protect your space. You can protect your time. You can protect your emotions and your dreams and your goals. You are going to amaze yourself with how healthy you're going to feel. And as always, and as I mentioned at the end of the last episode, if a positive trigger is to make an appointment with a counselor or a therapist or a trained professional or a coach or a mentor, I want you to do that. So let's wrap up this two-part series. We've talked about triggers, negative triggers, things outside of your control that just seem like they attack you and they win until now. Because now we are armed with our positive triggers. I mentioned some of them already. Lighting a candle, exercise, being outside, listening to something that pumps you up, right? Certain conversations, certain activities that you do. Maybe it's a, having a date night. Maybe it is going to bed early. Maybe it is waking up early. I don't know what that is for you. I want you to have so many of them, though, that no matter what arrow is sent your way, you have got something to battle back. Life is short. I don't want you to miss out. 
on certain things, certain experiences, because the weather was bad outside today. Or somebody said something that just kind of hmm, hurts your heart a little bit. And I want you to know, I know this from experience. I've had them all, you guys, just like you. What I've learned now is that the more proactive I can be with my positive arsenal of triggers, the better. Okay, let's go in to battle today. You've got this. God bless you. Thank you for joining me on the TikTok podcast. Please subscribe, rate, and leave a five-star review. Your feedback fuels our mission to help you master your time. Set your alarm for our next episode, and until then, make every moment count.